Hello, I'm T Maxwell Smith and welcome to my DSLR, the show that teaches you how to use your DSLR. Oh, logo. DSLR 101. This is my beginner's guide to pro photography and in this episode we're going to continue talking about exposure. <coughs> Not that type of exposure. In photography, exposure is time multiplied by light. Now, we've already talked about how we can control time using the shutter speed, but there's another part of the camera which helps us control light, and that's called the aperture. The aperture is located on the inside of your lens, and it's simply a hole that lets light through. So in case you thought your whole lens was just letting light through and focusing it, that's not quite true. The whole lens lets light through and focuses it through the aperture. But the aperture does more than just lets light through because this hole we can control the size of. If it's a large hole, it lets a lot of light through. If it's a really small hole, not much light gets through. And we call the size of this hole an f-stop. The actual f-stop number is a ratio of the focal length of the lens compared to the diameter of the hole. Now that's more of a lens thing and maybe we'll talk about that in another video, but basically right now we're trying to determine how much light is going through the hole in order to create an exposure. Now, the actual f-stop number has an inverse relationship with the size of the hole. A small number means a large hole. So an f1.8 is a large hole that lets a lot of light through, whereas an f22 or 32 is a very small hole and there's not much light coming through. So again, an inverse relationship. A large number means a small hole. A small number like f1.8 or f2 or 2.4, that's a large hole and is letting a lot of light through in order to create an exposure. So the aperture is located inside the lens and all of the glass that's in the lens is there to help focus the light through the aperture. Now because of this, if we change the size of the aperture, it actually has an effect on focusing. Now if you've ever used a magnifying glass to start a fire, you'd know the smaller you can get the focus of light, the more intense it is. It's the exact same with your lens. If you have a small aperture opening, the more focused the light is as it goes through. And this gives you what's called a large depth of field, meaning the distance between the point that is closest to you in focus and the point that is farthest away that's in focus, there is a large distance in between these two points. It's a large area that's in focus. It is a large depth of field. Now, if you open the aperture up, it's harder to focus light through a large hole. Therefore, the amount of light that is properly focused through the aperture is not very much. You have a shallow depth of field. There is not a lot of light correctly focused through a large aperture. Now, I'm gonna talk more about depth of field in a making, not taking photos video. For now, we're just looking at controlling the amount of light that's going through the aperture based on the size. The larger the aperture, the more light that goes through, the smaller the aperture, the less light that goes through. Okay, so let's sum up what we need to remember. The aperture is a hole in the lens that controls how much light goes through to make an exposure. Now we can control the size of this hole by changing the f-stop number. Now the larger the f-stop number, the smaller the aperture hole. And the size of the aperture hole actually controls how much of our photo will be in focus. So I have a lot more video ideas on how to make your photos better, but they're only gonna come online for as long as you folks want them to come online. So let me know you wanna see more by clicking that subscribe button that's in the top of your screen. And if you've liked the video or learnt something new, give us a thumbs up. Otherwise, until next time, happy shooting. Not that sort of shooting, thanks.